Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a lovely day so far. In today's video I am going to be talking through some of the products that I've tested throughout this year that I just can't get on board with, that I do not like for whatever reason. These are all products that I've tested before so all of the videos where I've tested these products before I will link in the description box so that you can see my first impressions and you can see in this video how I get on with them now. So some of these products I have continued to use and I have sort of learned how to make work. Some of them just straight up are not good products. So I have a full face of not very good products here. Let's just dive straight on in. The first one for foundation is the Essence Hydro Hero 24 hour tinted cream. Now I have seen quite a bit online about this and a lot of people really seem to like it. I will link the video where I tried this down below. I had to take off my full face of makeup and try and reapply this and even the second time it didn't go very well. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to try and use my hands. I think in the video where I tested this originally I used a brush. I can't remember, it was quite a while ago. But I'm going to try and use my hands today. I just found that it was patchy, it picked up on a lot of texture and the coverage wasn't very good. Now obviously it's like a tinted cream, it's like a tinted moisturiser but I didn't like this and I also think they only had a very very poor shade range for this I think if I remember rightly they had three shades and that's all I'm saying on that because that is awful <laughs> but let's see if I can make this work today let's see how it goes blended in <laughs> with my hands Yes, unfortunately my feelings still stand on that. It looks chunky and almost like chalky and I don't know how else to describe it other than chalky. Like, it's like there's really dry like pigments in the formula and it's like picking up on dryness and then just sticking there. And I already have dry skin and this has Hydro Hero as the name so you'd think that it would be a hydrating formula but I just don't find that it is like it's picking up on all of my texture it's not like blending out very nicely it's also not covering anything and I'm not expecting it to cover over like breakouts or anything like that but I do want more than what this is already offering me I'm just not a fan. <laughs> then next up, this is actually a product that I do still use sometimes. This is the Collection Lasting Perfection Hydrating Serum Concealer. Again, I have a whole video testing this out. And sort of similar to the tinted moisturiser, I just found that it picked up on a lot of texture. I have very, very dry skin, so trying to find something that is suitable for that is quite difficult. But I just found that this picked up on a lot of my dryness, didn't cover as well as the original version of the Lasting Perfection Concealer which I love but I was hoping that this would be slightly more hydrating than that, hence the name, ignore the cat. And considering this is the hydrating version of that concealer, I think that it is less hydrating. It's more drying than the original which is not its purpose. <laughs> like if I just come a bit closer, can you see on the inner corner sort of here how that's looking a little bit textured? It's just looking a bit dry and also whilst I'm a little bit closer, can you see here how that foundation is like grabbing onto that dry spot that I have near my temple? Weird, not my favourite. So for bronzer, I've picked this one, the Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer. When I very first used this, I properly swelled my brush in here. I got so much product onto my brush and then I applied it and honestly, it would have been enough product to paint a whole wall. It's so pigmented. I cannot downplay enough how pigmented this cream bronzer is. You need the tiniest, tiniest, little bit of product, literally that much 
will be enough for all of your face more than likely and this is a product that since I have played with it some more I have learnt how to use but when I very first used it I was like oh my goodness no this is the worst cream bronzer I've ever used it's just too much it's too much pigment it's too much product it's too creamy and all of these things and I just didn't get on with it when I very first tried it however now that I've learned how to use it I do like this bronzer <laughs> like I do feel it should have come with a warning on the front of it it's just one of those things that like I use quite a lot of cream bronzers and I have never used one that's as intense as this never <laughs> and then sticking with the cream base products theme I tried this um liquid blush earlier this year and just another one that I just could not get on board with this is the body collection liquid blush in coral pink this was just so sheer like if you think that colour like how pretty is that but it just does not show up on the skin like that at all however I have never used it like this like getting it onto the brush like this so I'm hoping I might be able to build it up a little bit more let's wait and see this is another one that I haven't picked up since I very first tested it so I'm just I'm just winging it today I don't have anywhere to be so I've got all of that product on there and let's see what I can build up. <laughs> I'm going to go in with a second layer because so I feel like I need it. So that is three layers of that blush and realistically I'm just not going to sit and blend out three layers of blush in the morning before I head off to work. That's the sort of problem that I have with this, it's just too much hard work. Like I'm not going to keep layering this up to get this level of pigment when I could just pick another cream bronzer or another powder bronzer, blush, sorry, blush, and get this level of pigment. Like I could just use something else and get the same look. It's just too much hard work. Similarly to that is this one, also from Body Collection. This is the Glow Bronzing Powder. Now when I tested this in the summer, I was a lot more tanned than this so I do use this however if I just swatch this for you now and hold it up it's a very similar tone to my skin like it doesn't look bronzier than my skin tone however it does have a really nice soft glow to it it has a really nice soft luminosity to it so that's why I like this one. I like pairing this over the top of this bronzer from Revolution. Again, it's not my favourite. I have other glowy bronzers that I prefer over this one. However, I have this, so I am going to use it. Would I recommend it? Probably not. It does look nice. It blends nicely. Again, same as the blush. It's just quite sheer. This almost feels more like a bronzy finishing powder like it's got that sort of finish to it where it's slightly luminous slightly setting like it does feel more like a setting powder that has that slightly bronzier color to it when i very first tested this i did think perhaps i should have got the darker shade but this is light slash medium and i think if you've got medium skin if you have a true medium skin tone this is just not going to work for you, like it barely works for me, barely. So I don't have a brow product so I'm going to quickly just go off camera and do my brows with one that I do like which is the Relove Power Brow so I'll be right back when I've got some brows on my head and I'll carry on with other products that I don't like. So another product that I have used this year and didn't love, another one that has gotten so much hype online and I just cannot for the life of me make this look good is the NYX brow glue. It's gotten so much hype online and every single time I use it it just deposits this awful thick creamy texture in my brows and I just can't get rid of it. I do prefer a tinted brow gel anyway so having a clear one is already like knocked off points 
However, this one is just so thick, so creamy, so gloopy. It leaves all this texture in my brows and I don't know if I'm using it right. I can't possibly because so many people use this and it looks great and I just can't. And I also find that even if I do this and I properly work it in, properly like brush it through, I don't find that it holds my brows very well and I already don't have very temperamental brows. I already find my brows quite easy to do. I don't have a lot of brow hairs. <laughs> they are very blonde, very sparse, very very fair brows so I just want something that's gonna keep them in place. However, this I can just never ever get to look how I want it to. Like even from quite far away I think you can see that this one is a lot lighter now because it's got that thick creamy texture on the actual brow hairs. I just don't like how it looks personally. I just think that a tinted brow gel is so much more my vibe. <laughs> okay onto the eyes and this is a recent addition into my makeup collection but equally one of the worst ones that I've tried in quite a long time. The Juvia's Place Alora 2 palette. I just can't get on board with it. The formulas are completely different to the other Juvia's Place palettes that I've tried. Completely chalk and cheese, like not even a little bit similar. I don't know why, I don't know if this is an incredibly old one that's been sat in some dusty old warehouse somewhere and they've dried up. There's no pigment to them, there's no like shimmer in the glitters, there's nothing that makes me want to keep using this. And I honestly think I have used this maybe three or four times since I got it and I think after today I'm just going to chuck it in the bin. That is how bad it is and that's really sad because I've wanted this for so long I was so excited to pick it up and I just can't get on board with it I just can't get it to work I'm gonna try again today I'm going to try and do something I feel like I've done loads of blue looks recently but I'm gonna try and do something today so big fluffy brush into this matte blue shade this is a really useful shade this is a really really beautiful blue like navy deep blue and that's where it stops the rest of them are shimmers and I just can't make them work <laughs> like this blue does blend out it does blend into a really nice like wash of colour it's really easy to use it's incredibly pigmented but it's very very easy to blend with however is it worth keeping this whole palette just for that one blue that I already have in another palette like not this exact one but I have navy blues in other palettes that are easier to use so do I keep this just for that probably not let me just go over the top with this one here I'll just take that on my finger and try and pat this over if you have this palette let me know do you think that it's not as good as the other Juvia's Place palettes I have a few of them and honestly they are my favourites the Alori One palette I've tested that recently is fantastic I reach for it all the time since I've tested it this one the shades just aren't the same they're not the same formula I don't believe that they are the same formula as the Alori one. Let me know if you've tried either of them. Let me know if you've tried any of the Juvia's Place palettes because I'm just left a little bit underwhelmed. Like that shimmer across the lid, where is the reflect? There's just nothing to it. Like it's ultimately just a matte. Like there's nothing, there's no shimmer in it. And all of them in the palette are like that. They're just not punchy enough. I want a shimmer to be seen from outer space and this is just not great. I know I need to blend some more because that is looking like <laughs> I have made a mess but it's just not the same. It's just not the same and I'm sad about it because I had such high hopes. I'm going to just take a really little fluffy brush 
into this lightest shade and I just want to try and brighten up that inner corner a bit because I blended that matte blue a little bit further in than I wanted to. Let's try and rescue it at least a little bit shall we? Like even that, I'm really layering that up and it's just nowhere near as shimmery and glittery and incredible as the other Juvia's Place palettes I've tried. Like if I was trying, it's it's difficult because if I was trying this palette and I didn't have a preconceived idea of how good Juvia's Place was, I would probably be completely okay with this palette. But because I know that Juvia's formulas are so much better than this, that's why I'm disappointed because I know that they're better. I know that they're so much better than this and that's where my disappointment comes. And honestly, I have blues that perform better than this. I have blues that I prefer and that perform better than this. More shimmery, more intensely glittery, more of what I want than this. And that's all that I have to say on that. I'm going to stop complaining about it now. Another one that I will continue to complain about is the Rimmel Thrill Seeker Mascara. This smudged and crumbled all over my face. I have honestly only used this once, the time that I did the wear test, and it was awful. I just can't, like, it's not good. It's just not a good mascara. It smells so strong of, like, poster paint from primary school, if you remember that. It's so strong, like, I can smell it, and it's it's quite a distance from my face and I can smell it. It's awful. <laughs> like, look how thick and clumpy and awful that looks on the brush. And it doesn't, like, get any better when you put it on your lashes. Let's wait and see. I like a thick, clumpy lash, but honestly, I just can't get on board with this. It feels... The other problem with this is that it feels so heavy like my eyelids feel heavy with the amount of product that's on my lashes. I don't like it. I am not a fan. I do not like. Would not recommend. So lastly is lips and I have a few products that I did not get on board with this year. However, this has to be the worst one so I wanted to mention this one today. This is the Revolution Matte Bomb Liquid Lip. This was so awful it never even made it into a video. So this is the first time you're seeing it on my channel but trust that I have tried it before and it's awful. So this is in the shade Nude Magnet and it looks like it should be a really beautiful soft nudie pink. And the colour is not the problem that I have here. The problem is that this feels fine. Currently, this feels absolutely fine. It just feels like almost like a lip balm, just just completely normal. But as this dries, and I'm sure you'll be able to see it as I am explaining this to you, as this dries, it almost turns into like a sticky, tacky sort of feeling, and it will glue my lips together. It's so drying that as I continue to wear this and I'm sure as I continue to ramble so that you can see how this turns out, it just dries all of the moisture out of my lips that are already dry because I have dry skin and it's the middle of winter. I can already feel that this is like starting to stick together so just see how this looks. And that's how it stays. That is um, that is the, the, the finished product there. Horrible. And it already feels like I've got the Sahara Desert on my lips, which isn't a texture that I like. It will continue to get drier. It will continue to sort of crack, sort of not last on my lips at all and just keep getting progressively worse. So that is my full face of products that I hate. If any of these are products that you love, please, please let me know. I would love to know if any of these are products that you really, really rate. Like, how do you feel about the NYX brow glue? So I feel like so many people love it and I just can't get on board with it. 
I am finding it quite difficult to talk <laughs> because my mouth keeps getting stuck together. So I hope you enjoyed this video. There will be the positive version of this. I wanted to start negatively and then move on to the positive so that we can end the year on a high. So if you want to see my favourite products for the year, that video will be coming very soon. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. Bye.